ultimate purpose. So yeah. some of the obstacles that's happening is one, there's there's not a lot of there's a lot of interpretation that's coming out. Like for instance, yesterday they came out with an interpretation that says, okay, for you guys, that's your small schedule C. Schedule C is really your self-employed individual. You know, I'm okay. a plumber. I got my truck with my tools. I'm a welder. Uh, I'm an owner operator, trucking guy. The list goes on. You can even be a medical doctor that just operates as a sole proprietorship. Okay. You know, uh, if you had a loss in your Schedule C because of depreciation, for instance, not a real loss, but you reported a loss, then technically you didn't qualify for the PPP if you did not have any employees. And, and you do have a lot of people that fell in that situation. So the clarification that came out yesterday, keep in mind yesterday, March the 3rd, the second round of the PPP ends March the 31st. So okay. it doesn't give you a lot of time. Really? Yes. And the interpretation says, okay, for you guys that fall in this situation, you don't have to use your net income. You can use the, the, uh, the gross revenues you know, uh, to, to make the calculation of the, pay, the, the loan amount that you qualify for. That's a huge relief. So they quickly came up with the interpretation and the form. But keep in mind, now they have March the 31st. A lot of banks will stop taking applications probably a week, two weeks before the cut. So if they, they go- Have they considered extending it or that was not a part of the interpretation? Well, they, they didn't address actually- the AICPA, which is the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, has been reaching and they've been very proactive in bringing up some of these issues with the SBA. And they actually asked, look guys, with the checks controls that you've implemented, it's really bottleneck things, right? Now, my experience is not all banks have encountered that, right? Some have done a great job in overcoming this. Um, but the, the AICPA reached out to them and said, hey guys, you, you really need to take into consideration what's happening. I know you wanna check that the applicant qualifies and that the applicant is a legitimate business. And that's been creating a lot of obstacles because they'll say, well, your name of the company doesn't match your EI number. So it gets rejected or some other obstacle, right? Uh, so what the SBA responded says, okay, we're gonna give you banks more liberties and check some of these issues that are coming up. So if you help us check it, we'll be able to process things. Mm -hmm. um, across the nation, by now, I think we've reached about half of the money, the 300 billion. And then, and right now they put up another seven point, I think 7.5 billion on the table. So the AICPA is saying, okay, give us another 60 days because it's not enough time. You started mm -hmm. accepting applications on January the 11th. The first two days were earmarked for very small community banks. Um, and they have, SBA hasn't come back and, and addressed that issue about ex extending the time from March the 31st to whatever period they're going to give us. Um, but they have addressed some of these other things that I've mentioned. Uh, my experience through my client base is it, it, it hasn't been easy, right? I mean, I got clients that presented their completed application since the first week. And to this day, they haven't been approved, much less funded. Yeah. And, and Raul, the bank? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, Raul, um, what are some of the qualifications for the second round? So if you, if you got the first round, does that mean it sounds like it doesn't mean you automatically qualify for the second round. That's correct. Yeah, you don't automatically qualify. The first round, pretty much everybody qualified, assuming you had uh, payroll. This time, they said, well, in order for you to qualify, you have to meet a certain requirement. One of them is that you had to experience a decrease of 25% or more in any quarter uh, from 2020 compared to 2019. That's, that's the that's a number one biggest hurdle. So you don't have to experience that for the whole year, just in any quarter. That's that's the, the trigger point 
to, to get you into this program. Then the second obstacle to overcome is the how to calculate the loan. So one of the other complexities that we're encountering is if you have one of these serial entrepreneurs that have multiple investments, now the SBA is saying, okay, you might have to include in the computation of the, term, the determination of the 25% decrease or more, the revenues of all these entities that you own more than 50% or that you control. So, so I mean, you, you, you end up ha having situations to where one of your companies um, having experience of 25% or more, uh, but once you aggregate all of them, you might not meet that threshold. Right. But by the same token, you could have the, the, the opposite, right? To where individually you don't meet the 25, but collectively you do. Right. So it, 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 it could be a double-edged sword. So. Right. But you don't, you don't get to pick. You don't get to pick. You have to go through. I mean, what you do get to pick is <clears throat> you get to the, make the assessment in the companies where you own more than 50%, right? It'll be 51 or more. Or where you don't necessarily have the more than 50%, but you do control the company. So that automatically, you have to incorporate that entity's gross receipts. Right. So, so now this loan is, is, is a forgivable loan also, right? Like the, the, the original PPP uh, had a forgiveness component. Uh, this also has a forgiveness component to it. That is correct. It, it also qualifies, which right now that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with the forgiveness application of the first round. And then once you get this and, and you meet all the requirements of uh, meeting the forgiveness qualifications, you'll also it'll it also qualify for that. Yeah. And they made it they made it easier to qualify for that. So if you got a loan of 150000 or less, the application is significantly easier now and you really don't need to present any supporting documentation other than the application itself for forgiveness okay, okay.